Some folk would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold. But these things, they treasure and forget about, they forget all about their souls. But we've decided, <laughs> we've decided to make Jesus, we decided to make him our choice. Let me say that one more time. Some folk would rather have houses and acres and acres of land. Some folk, they choose silver and gold. But these things, they treasure and forget about, they forget all about their souls. But listen, we've decided, church, we've decided to make Jesus, we've decided to make him our choice. Come on, help me, y'all.
Praise the Lord. We've decided to make Jesus our choice. I decided to make Jesus my choice. Give God praise because Jesus is your choice. Amen. You're if, you, uh, if you really made Jesus your choice and, you, and you're glad about it, say hallelujah in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Certainly good to be in the house of the Lord, and we are so thankful to see all my brothers and sisters. Uh, it's just good to be at another 8 o'clock. Thank you again for all of those who are regular attendees of the 8 a.m. service. Can you help me celebrate and thank God for this ensemble? Excellent job. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Fantastic, fantastic. And let us thank God for the musicians. Give God praise for them, the musicians. Amen. And we got to give God praise for the ushers. They're already right there in their place uh, at their duty. We thank God for them. Amen, amen. It's good to be here. And we're today going to look at this uh, 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 message out of the book of Job, Job 23, Job 23, that's Job in the Old Testament, the 23rd chapter of Job, J-O-B, Job, amen, 23rd chapter 23, chapter 23, Job chapter 23, and we're going to start reading in the first verse, and uh, this is the King James Version I'll be reading today, but that's Job the 23rd chapter, and starting in the first verse. If you would like to stand, you may do so in the reading of this word, Job 23, 23, uh, 23rd chapter, starting in the first verse, and this is how it reads. Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavily than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. And I wonder I would, would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with argument. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot has held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than necessary food. That's it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Verse 10 says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Will you bow your heads with me now? God, we thank you today as we look at this word today. As we thank you for this word that I, I can say, after this, I shall come forth as pure gold. God, let that be our testimony today. After this, I shall come forth as pure gold. Hide this preacher behind your cross. Let us lift you up. Let us know, God, that you are worthy to be praised. Now we ask you now, God, to let me decrease and you increase. Let the people hear you and let the love of God uh, just surround us all. We love you and adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints of God say amen. amen. Today we look at the book uh, in this, in this uh, lesson today out of the book of Job. And everybody's familiar with Job, but I want you to know Job at the, in the very beginning uh, was violently, violently attacked by uh, the enemy, uh, by Satan, by the father of lies, by the roaming lion who seeketh whom he might devour. 
And uh, it says in, in chapters 1 and 2, for those who may not be familiar to read it, you'll find out that Job had a really bad week. Has anybody ever had a really bad week? Anybody ever had a really bad week? Well, I think Job got you beat because uh, the first day he lost his farming operations. Uh, he lost his sheep trading business. He lost his Campbell transportation business. And make everything even worse, he lost his children in a, in a, in a strong whirlwind or a, you can call it a hurricane. Now, you would think that that would be bad enough, but just a few days later, uh, we know that the, uh, Satan uh, got the okay from God. And he, had a heaven, he had a meeting in heaven, and uh, God said, you, might be, you can strike his flesh, but you cannot uh, hurt his soul. And so here is Job, who uh, now is afflicted by despisable sores. Job has sores from the crown of his head, head down to the sole of his feet. And you can see Job in the second chapter, in the eighth verse, he is sitting at the, in, the, in the street of the town as if he's lost everything. He has uh, covered himself in ashes, and he's taken a portion of pottery to scratch his sores. So Y'all see Job today sitting, sitting right there. And if that wasn't bad enough, you would think that that was worse enough, but... Just a few days later, Job's wife came to him and said, Job, do you still persist in your integrity? And work? Do you still trust this God? Do you still think this God is a God who is good and kind? And uh, she said, what you ought to do is curse God and die. But Job said, you know what? You sound like a foolish woman right now. He says, uh, uh, shouldn't we uh, receive the good at the hand of the God, God as well as the bad? And so with all of that, it says Job did not sin against God with his lips. Now, you would think that that would be worse enough. But then some friends, so-called, I'm going to call them so-called friends. Y'all got any so-called friends? Anybody? They came around. They're going to say, we're going to support Job, and we're going to help Job out. And so his friends came to give them help, but they were really no help at all because they tried to psychoanalyze why Job was in the situation he was in. They tried to put Job under a microscope. As a matter of fact, they're trying to find out why, Job, that you are having it so bad. Amen. Well, the first friend... Uh, Eliphaz said, Job, you have sinned against God, and now you're getting the payback. Y'all know you got some friends like that looking for a way that they want to say something that, say, that let you know that your way is not good. And then, uh, then came Bildad. Bildad said, Job, you must not have been living like we thought you were living. We thought you were a righteous man, but no, there must be something else going on in your house. And then, and then Zophar uh, one of the other friends came to Job and said, God had, does not want to talk to you because he wants to punish you. Y'all got any friends like that? And then the last friend came up. His name was Elihu. And Elihu said to Job, you are guilty. No, no, you guilty, brother, but you are an arrogant. Well, y'all know the rest of it, what he probably said. <laughs> Amen. So now, when you got friends like that, that do who need any enemies? That they were surrounding him, and they were not helping him out. But Job did not sin with his lips. But Job, obviously, you know, you say Job didn't sin it with his lips, but he had some thoughts that wasn't really uh, great. Amen. Anybody know that sometimes you got thoughts that are popping all up in your mind? You really want to just say, you know what? I'm gonna tell you. Look, I'm gonna lay my religion down. I'm gonna tell you. I come from the. I, I come from Jersey. I cut. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I come from Georgia, man. We hit you upside the head, you know. And so uh, here it is in this text here. Uh, Job is going through uh, trials. He's going through tribulations. But I want you to know, Job is going to testify today that we can come through as pure gold when we go through trials and tribulations. So if you, if you want to come through as pure gold, you must first understand that you're going through a process. We don't understand sometimes God's ways because we think God's ways ought to be that everything we get, we want the cake and eat it too. Anybody know in the house, we want everything to be good. But there's a process that God takes us through. And this, if, we, if you hang on in the process, you'll find out that you come, you'll come through as pure gold. Some of us want the gold, but we don't want to have nothing to do with the process. Amen. Some of us want the prize, but we don't want to have anything with stretching. Uh, some of us want to be blessed, but we don't want to have to go through anything. I wish I had some witness in the house know what I'm talking about. 
But there is a process of refining gold. If you look at this on a, pro on a natural level, this process involves putting fire to a metal in order to separate the gold from the junk. Can I, can I get somebody to say amen in the house? Uh, this metal has, uh, it has gold in it, but it also got some useless stuff. It's got some impurities. It's got some uh, re that reduces its value. Can I go ahead and say this? Uh, we are all metal. We got some gold in us. But we got some other stuff in us, amen. We got some impurities. We got some things that need to be taken out. We got some mess, and we got some junk. Yeah, am I talking to some people in the house here? And you got gold, but that gold has to be minded. Can I get an amen in the house here today? And so right here, we know we got impurities because I like the way David said it. He said, we were born in sin and shaped in what? Iniquity. We know we got some uh, impurities in us because I like the way Job says, a man that is born of a woman is a few days, what? Full of trouble. But all of us have some impurities, some imperfections, but guess what? I want you to know uh, we believe God's going to bless us today and he's going to allow us to what? Come through as pure gold. And I want you to go ahead and celebrate right now because of what the Lord has already done. What has he done? I don't know about you, but in all of my imperfections, in all of my uh, mess, in all of my junk, well, let me talk about, y'all want me to talk about, y'all want to hear the preacher talk about his junk, amen, but nobody's like, I don't know what he's talking about. I ain't got no... But I want you to know, I'm glad today that the Lord has already given us a word that says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, guess what? We are healed. So the process, again, as I think about refining uh, gold, it says in the, in the ancient days, the form of refining uh, involved a craftsman uh, sitting next to a hot fire within a molten gold and a crucible being stirred up. And this crucible, they would put the fire on it, and it gets hot enough so that the gold would sink down because it's heavy, but all the other unnecessary stuff would rise up to the top. And they call it dross, and they would just skip, skim off the dross. Amen. And I want you to know sometimes that what God does in our lives, sometimes the Lord will put us in a refining process. The Lord will take us through a refining process. By the way, if the people, there are people who went through the Harvey, uh, uh, Hurricane Harvey, that was just a refining process. The people who are uh, in the pathway of Irma, that's just a refining process. Uh, if you have gone through trials, if you've gone through tribulation, it's just a refining process. Well, preacher, how do you know? Anybody want to know how I know it's a refining process? Y'all know, you know, this is how I know, because you're still here. If, 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 if it was a process that take you out, you wouldn't be here right now. Can I get one amen in the house? You had a wreck in the car. The car was damaged. you still here. Uh, uh, your house might have been uh, fire. Uh, fire took it, but guess what? you still here. You, you, know, you might have lost some furniture, some clothing, some uh, appliances, but you still here. The neighborhood may be racked with all kind of crime, and there are people that are shooting people right next door, but guess what? You still here. Yeah. Amen. So I think sometimes we ought to go ahead and praise God. Give him a still here praise. Anybody in the house want to? I'm still here, and I'm going to praise him because I thank God that I'm still here. Destruction and loss might have been hanging around my house. Disappointment and troubles might have been all around. Sickness and distress might have been all around. But thank God that I am, somebody say it with me, I am here. And right here, this is where I believe this is where it starts because you are here. And so uh, I, I, I want you to know there's some good news in the house because you're, not, you're going through. Somebody say, I'm going through. I'm not going to stay in this process. I'm not going to dwell in this process. I'm not going to live in it, but I'm going through. And so I want you to know that when God gets through with me, I guess what? I'm going to come through as pure gold. And so as we look at this text in verse number 23, I'm sorry, chapter number 23, uh, we see what Job is saying because I think the first thing you're going to have to do if you're going to uh, want to get through the refining process, let me just hands to those who want to get through their refining process. Anybody want to get through their refining uh, process? Uh, well, the first thing you have to do is don't complain, just trust God. Don't complain, just trust God. Uh, verse number two says, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. J uh, Job uh, uh, had been accused of all of these crimes by his friends, uh, but Job did not complain to his friends. You need to read this text. 
because this text, I never saw Job. You know, the people were landing on him. Man, you ain't done this. You ain't this. You ain't that. You know what? Job just took it all. You know, sometimes it's good. Just keep your mouth closed. Amen. Take it on in. Don't complain because there's no sense of complaining to them because they can't help you anyway. Amen. You know, they, they, so I think that's what Job was trying to tell. Don't be complaining to your friends. Don't come complaining about all of the stuff you're going through because when you complain, guess what your friend's thinking? Well, I got a reason to complain too. So y'all get together and have a complaining part if you want to, but I don't want to be a part of any, anything like that. But I want, uh, uh, so don't complain, he said. But what Job did, he took it to the Lord. He took it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And anybody glad to know that you can take whatever, you know what, there's nothing you can't take to God. I don't know where people get this idea about, well, you can't question God. Well, you can question God. God can answer you. He ain't afraid of your questions. Uh, you know, so you have to take whatever you have that's on you, take it to the Lord in prayer. If you got to go complain to God, go ahead and complain to God. But if you, if you trust God, just don't complain. Hey, man, can I get a witness in the house? If you, if you really trust God, just don't complain. And I'll give you some good advice here today from Reverend Paul Jones. He says, I had some good days. And I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around, can I stop right there? Go ahead and look around. Yeah, this is an activity. You know, church is a participation activity. Amen. Go ahead and look around. And when I look around, and guess what? Think, go ahead and think things over. All of my good days. I weigh my bad days. Somebody say, I won't complain. I won't. Somebody say, I will not complain. If you think about it and you look around, you'll see what I'm talking about. Amen, amen. So the first thing I believe what Paul, Job tells us is don't complain, trust God. But I think there's something else in the text. He says uh, to go through this refining process, you must seek God with your, all your heart, your mind, and your soul. When you're going through something difficult, the key is to seek God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. Look at verse number three. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. Check it out. That I might come even to his seat. And down to verse number 8. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backwards, but I can't perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I can't behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. Job is looking for God. Can I ask somebody, have you ever been in a place where you wanted to hear from God in a situation and it seemed like the more you ask, that seemed like the, more, the less you could grab hold of him? Anybody, any, any real believers in the house, now, maybe y'all can pray and he's right there, but anybody ever tried, I'm seeking God, but it's like, as soon as I go forward looking for him, I can't find him. If I go back, I can't find him. Well, let me tell you what, you are not alone. As a matter of fact, you're in the company of Job. I, sometimes I think that God plays a game. You remember hide and seek? Anybody remember the hide and seek? Y'all remember that? When I was a little boy, that's what we used to play hide and seek. And if you were on the front, if you were it, y'all know who it is, right? It is the person that needs to, uh, uh, is at the home base. We, we find the, they find the home base at the front, the front porch. Amen. With my sisters and my brothers and, and the people right next door, uh, when they, they would have to go and hide. If I was going to be it, I would be at the front door. And you got to count to 10 or count to 15. Y'all, anybody never played that game? I ain't like y'all know it, okay. And so, uh, so you count them at 15, and then you go looking for the people. And if you can tag them before they get back to the home base. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? That was, that was hide and seek, amen. I, sometimes we think God is playing hide and seek. But let me tell you, I'm getting ready to open up to you how God does that game. Anybody want to know how he does it? Anybody want to know? His, his, here it is right here. This is how God deals with this hide and seek situation. For he says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and ye shall, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. So here's the way God does it. He said, he said ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Keep doing it. Ask, you got to keep on doing it. Ask, seek, and find. And here's the thing. I want you to know, I want you to know, God will open up that door. Do you, you, do you know how I know that? He will do it. Somebody say, he'll do it. If you keep asking, if you keep seeking, if you keep knocking, somebody say, he'll do it. Well, preacher, how do you know he's going to do it? Well, just read your Bible. Because the next verse it says, he says here, for everyone that asks. Let me see everyone. Anybody, let me see the hands of everyone in the house. Everyone that asks, he says, find it. 
He says, everyone uh, that uh, seeks shall find it, and everybody who knocks, guess what? It shall be open. So it might not be open the way you want it to be open, because God's got a different way, but praise God, it will be open. Go ahead and give God a praise right now that he's opening some doors that you can't even have. So he says that you have to seek him with all your heart, but there's something else in this refining process you must do. You must have a conversation with God, but let God speak. Let me say it again. Have a conversation with God, but let God speak. Verse number four says, I would order my calls before him and fill my mouth with arguments. So what Job is wanting to say, man, Job is really, Job want to find God, but he, his attitude ain't right. I can't get nobody in the house to say amen. You know, sometimes what we, want to, we want to talk to God, but well, our, our attitude is whacked. Our attitude is all messed up. Because what Job wanted to do is tell God all about, what well, God, I was, I was a righteous man. I, I did what I was supposed to do. And look at how you are messing around with me. That's what he wanted to do. Anybody ever wanted to pray to God and just, just give him a piece of your mind? I, well, Lord, I come to church every Sunday. You owe me. Yeah, I wish I had some real believers. Yeah, I was, you know, Lord, you know, I sing in the choir. Why don't you straighten out my family? I can't get nobody out. Lord, listen, I count, I count the money. I'm a, I'm a trustee. I count your money every day and seem like I can't never get no money. And I can't get nobody in the house to say amen. What is this all about? And so right here, right here, the problem is that our prayers are too self-centered. It's all about me, what I'm going to get, what I'm going to get. Well, I need some people in the house that say, you know what? I'm tired of this self-centered way of living. But, Lord, I might not be able to, I might not, I have to go through some stuff, but that's okay because I want you to get the glory. When I come out of it, Lord, I don't want to get the reason, I want you to know the reason that I want to come out of it is because you get the glory. Anybody in the house here today, uh, he'll do it. Now, you know, if you're going through unemployment, when you get a job, guess what? God gets the glory. Sometimes we are trying to hold the glory. And you ought to give the glory to the God. I know it's a mess, but you, when you come, when you get me out of it, God, you get the glory. I know it's a test, but God, when I come out of it, you're going to get me in the glory. I know it looks ugly, but guess what? When I come out of it, you get the glory. So here you are. When you're, when you're going through a refining process, you have to uh, uh, let God speak and have a conversation with God, but let God speak. And here it is right here. And as you are going through this refining process, you must listen. Somebody say, listen to God. I think we're people who like to talk. We want to talk to God, but we ain't listening. You know, it takes a whole nother level of spirituality. Y'all here in the house with me, anybody in the house, to listen to God. And that's when you know that you need to continue to grow in your spiritual walk because you got to be at a point where you what? Listen to God. Now, we're good at talking to God, but ain't too many people listening. Amen in the house. And I'll give you an example, and I like the way uh, Elijah tells us how to listen. Elijah, uh, the story of Elijah is that when he, uh, Elijah went and he defeated, uh, through the power of God, 400 Baal worshipers and 400 Asherah worshipers. And uh, the Lord showed himself strong. <clears throat> and so, uh, and, and Elijah, uh, you thought he was, a, he was a great, mighty man. He was great and mighty until he heard of a lady by the name of Jezebel. I can't get <laughs> I don't care how high you are. There's some people God got can, show, can, can humble you. Can I get somebody in the house here? He was great until he met Jezebel. And Jezebel said to him, Elijah, don't you think you're getting away? Because just like you, you killed those, those worshipers, this time tomorrow, you're going to be mine. And I want you to know, Elijah, had a he had a depressed moment. He went into his house. Well, he actually went to the mountain. He closed the doors in the mountain. He said, I ain't coming out. Now, I know some of us have done that. You know, we can close ourselves up. I ain't coming out no more. I ain't just, I'm just done. I'm depressed. I don't want to fool with nobody. And so while he was there uh, in, his, in his moment of depression, uh, the Lord began to speak to him. <laughs> and the first time the Lord came over, he said there was a, there was a great wind. And he said, uh, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. <laughs> and he said, then there was a great earthquake. It shook his world. Man, God wasn't even in the earthquake. Then he said it was a fire that came down, whoo, and it burned everything. Guess what? God wasn't in the fire. But then there was a, si a small, quiet voice. See, I'm going to tell y'all right now, we need, to start, we need to start thinking about that, sm that small, quiet voice. Because some of us got so many things going. We're doing so many things. We're trying to go over here. We're trying to go over there. We're trying to keep up with all our friends on Facebook. We're kind of trying to keep up with all this stuff on the internet. We're reading all about armor. Is it coming this way? Now, listen, let me tell you something. Listen to that small, quiet voice. 
and you'll see what God is all is up to. So that's one way to listen to God, but I like another story, and I'm going to keep moving. I'm about done. Uh, it's another story I, I like when I think about listening to God. When, and when I think about listening to God, I think about Martha and Mary. Y'all know the Martha and Mary story? Well, they, they, they invited Jesus to, the, to, to eat dinner. And so uh, when Jesus came into the house and Jesus sat down, he began to talk. Now, whenever Jesus talked, we need to stop what we're doing. Amen. 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 Uh, and I'm not talking about injury. Injury, you go ahead and do your live Facebook. But I know some of us, when we look at our, 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 uh, our cell phones and we're supposed to be following the preacher on Scripture, I know y'all ain't always looking at no Scripture. I, I know that, I don't know that, but, but here's the thing, so, so Jesus comes in, and uh, uh, Mary is right there at his feet, and Martha gets an attitude, you know, I, I love these stories because this is so real, Martha is trying to get the food on the table, y'all know any people in your house like that, you're trying to work to get the food on the table, and they're laying around watching TV, it ain't helping nobody, and Martha got upset, Martha went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I'm doing all this work by myself. And my sister is sitting around with it, uh, right at your feet. But what Jesus said to her, listen, she said, Martha, that's your problem. You're too compressed and too occupied with the wrong stuff. Somebody say hallelujah in the house. I'm not going to talk to anybody here today. But she said, but, but, but Mary took the very best. She wanted to stay at the feet of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord was talking. And so all I'm trying to tell you, if you're going to listen to the God, you need to hear that small, quiet voice, and you need to sit at the feet of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So to get through this refining process, trust the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and soul. Um, and so... Uh, and when you do that, you'll, you'll, you'll get through it. Um, and the other thing here, it says that uh, what God is getting ready to do, though, when you trust God with all your heart, mind, and soul, uh, what I like about it in verse number six, it says, when he pleaded against me with his great power, uh, no, but he would put strength in me. What, what Job understood is that what he really needed was the strength of God. Let me tell y'all something. God can get through you through anything, but you need the strength of God to get through it. And so what Job is understanding now is that because you're weak, you need the strength of God. And here's a text that I love about this. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Here's the thing. When the Lord is the strength of your life, you're, gonna, you're not going you're gonna, you're to be afraid. When the Lord is the strength of your life, when the wicked and even the enemies come to eat of your flesh, guess what? You're going to be steady and still. Uh, when, the, when the Lord is the strength of your life, you're going to, uh, no matter whether the host should camp against you, your heart will not fear. Because there's one thing that you desire of the Lord, and that is to seek after him, because he is what? The strength of your life. So Job says, uh, uh, tells us to trust in the Lord and keep on walking the walk. This is all I'm trying to tell you today. Just keep on doing what you are doing. Keep on walking the walk, and God's going to bless you. Look at verse number 11. He says, my foot has held his steps. His way have I kept and not denied. So what Job is telling us today, just keep on walking the walk. Keep on uh, stepping by faith. Keep on doing what you know is right. Keep on living by the way of the Lord. Keep on trusting his word. Keep on walking the walk. Keep on doing right. Keep on treating your brothers and sisters right. Keep on uh, telling the truth even when things are hurting you sometimes. Keep on believing God. He said, just walk the walk. Somebody say, walk the walk. Walk the walk. And finally, what Job tells us, not only uh, do you walk the walk, but let's say Job tells us to talk the talk. Somebody say, talk the talk. talk, the talk. Verse 12 says, neither have I gone back from my commandments of his lips. He says, I have in, in, in esteemed the words of my mouth more than my necessary food. So I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, keep on walking the walk and talking the talk. See, the thing is that sometimes when the enemy comes, it looks like it's not going to happen, but keep on talking the talk. Anybody's a witness in the house? You may not have rent money, but God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. You may have confusion in your house, but peace I leave with you. Not the peace that, that the world gives you, but let not your heart be troubled. You might be sick in your body, but keep on talking to talk. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them from them all. You may be depressed, but keep on talking to talk. God is the lifter up of my soul. So you got to talk this thing out. So if you keep on walking, somebody say walking. If you keep on talking, I want you to know the Lord's going to work it out. And you shall come through as pure gold. In the midst of unemployment, somebody say, you, if you keep on walking, I will come through as pure gold. 
In the midst of marriage problems, I will come through as pure gold. In the midst of son and daughter issues, and I shall come through as pure gold. In the midst of job situations, you ought to say it to yourself, I will come through as pure gold. In the midst of financial lack, somebody ought to go ahead and testify right now, I shall come through as pure gold. In the midst of sickness, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of depression, you ought to go ahead and say it for yourself, I will, somebody say I will, I will, I will come through as pure gold. No matter what may be dealing with going on in your life, somebody will go say and say, I will. Somebody say, I will come through as pure gold. I'm going to give you one more example. I'm getting ready to take my seat. I thank God that we're in good company because there's a whole lot of people in the Bible who had to go through a process. And I want you to know you ought to go ahead and thank God right now because he's going to give you some evidence that he will bring you through. Anybody want some evidence today that God's going to bring you through? Anybody need one more, evidence, one more piece of da data? One more piece of data. Here it is right here. Can I call up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Because here's the thing about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What I like about them is that they trusted God. And I'm going to tell you all sometime, when you trust God, it'll get you in a fire and furnace. So they trusted God. And when they went to Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they, and they found out that, that, that uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't bowing down, Nebuchadnezzar said, now, come on here, boys. Come over here. I'm going to give you one more chance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I'm giving you one more chance to bow down. When you hear the harp, when you hear the pipe, when you hear the noises, you need to bow down to the golden image. But I love Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> I love this. I love this when they say, uh, well, you know, here it is right here, King. We don't, we're not trying to uh, dishonor you, but listen, we didn't got to talk this over. I can't get nobody the house here today. He said, we already know what we're going to do. And here's the thing. Uh, uh, we know God can deliver us, but let me tell you, King, uh, we ain't bowing down to your false God. I can't get nobody in the house here today. I'm looking for some believers in the house that's going to say, no, God, I'm still going to have my integrity. I'm still going to look up, and I'm not bowing down to any false anything. And so uh, uh, now Nebuchadnezzar is real mad. He's real mad right now. And Nebuchadnezzar told his guys, listen, uh, we get ready to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in, in the furnace. He says, heat the thing up seven times hotter. He's mad now. So they heated the furnace up seven times hotter. And they got the strong guards to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And when they opened the door to throw uh, the, the three boys in, the, the, the strong guards uh, uh, died because of the fire. That's some, some, some serious fire. But what's interesting there is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego landed in the bottom of the, of the fiery furnace. Y'all getting ready to hear this story. Y'all ready to want to, y'all, somebody, somebody says, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it, preach it. Amen. So here it is. The boys are in the fire. And, and so now Nebuchadnezzar began to look in the window. And when he looked in the window, he said, wait a minute, y'all. There's a problem in here. Because wasn't them three boys we sent in the fire? Wasn't it Shadrach? Wasn't it Meshach? Wasn't it Abednego? But he says, I see a fourth man in the fire. I need somebody to know. Go ahead and praise God for the fourth man. See, I want you to know, no matter what you got to deal with, there's a fourth man in the fire. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your situation might be. But you know, he said, there's a fourth man in the fire. But here's the key. He looked like, I can't get no help in the house. Uh, he looked like the king, the son of God. Now, well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, he, he is the king of kings. Uh, he is the Lord of lords. Uh, he is the great I am that I am. He is the one that will be with you in the fire. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And so, he says, if you just trust me, I will bring you out. Not only when they bought, when they bought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out, there was no sign of being in the fire. No smoke, no smell, no nothing. Why? Because the great God took them through this process. And I want you to know today, if I'm talking to you, hang in there. Just trust the Lord. He's got your back. He's got your front, he's got your side, he's got your left, he's got your right, he got everything you need. All you got to do is trust him. Somebody say trust him. <clears throat> and I'm going to believe what Reverend Paul Jones said. 
I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, anybody that's a witness in the house, outweighs my bad days. I, I won't complain. Why? Because God has been good to me. If he's been good to you, go ahead and say, Oh, he's been good to me. More than this whole world could ever be. He's been so good, so good. To, to me. He dried my tears away, turned my midnight into day, and I'll say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I won't complain. If you're here today, if you're here today, I invite you to come. The doors of the church are open right now. You know, listen, I, I'm, so, I'm a preacher that believes that all of what we talk about comes to one point in the message and that is are you well and ready to step out now I'm going to tell you right now you may have some questions about it uh, you may not have been baptized you may not have joined the church we have some questions about it but don't let those questions stop you now is the time God is calling all people to come home and if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ and you haven't been baptized this is your time if you're looking for a church home and you're not sure about the church, I want you to know step, step by faith because we all need a place where we can hang our hat. We all need a place where the preacher will preach the word, will try his best to preach the word. We all need a place where people will pray, don't mind uh, getting ugly for the Lord. If you're here today, I want you to please come. The door of the church are open. Would everybody please stand? The door of the church are open. Please stand just where you are. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand.